I love talking about and sharing how to become a human lie detector. Very useful stuff that you can apply to so many things in our lives. Not as difficult as people think. So I'm going to go over several different ways to pick up if people are telling lies. It is not a checklist. Nobody is going to do every single one. But if they do many of them, it kind of adds up and then you look at it and if it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck and looks like a duck, then that person's probably lying. So one time, somebody who had taken this training, they had a business where they thought they had an employee stealing. So after this training, they went and they looked at everything I'm about to share with you and they said that the person did almost every single one and they eventually found out later they were stealing from them and they fired them. So just find out which one applies because it may not be all of them. First, you've got to establish a person's baseline. So what that means is you can't immediately walk in and start accusing somebody or saying they're lying or they stole from you. I have a friend who has a very bad shake in his hand. If you went up to this guy and you immediately started trying to accuse him and you didn't know him at all, you may think that shake man he's lying. That is normal. So you need to know a person's baseline, sit with them, talk to them. If you think they stole something, say, hey Jim, you know, we're missing 500 bucks from the safe. Who do you think could have taken it? Or, hey Jim, we're missing 500 bucks from the safe. Did Billy come by later? Does, is he the one who maybe took it? That way you can see their normal baseline. You're not accusing them. You're not putting them in an uncomfortable position. Watch the feet. Everybody thinks it's the head or the face, which is the dead giveaway. But we are trained to lie with our face. We're used to lying with our mouth. Subconsciously, our feet are going to give us away. So TSA and custom agents are trained to watch where the feet are pointing. So if I'm facing up right here at the custom booth, and they ask me if I have anything to declare, yet my feet are pointing this way, and I'm sitting here trying to talk, why are my feet pointing this way as in I want to get the heck out of here? So your feet are subconsciously telling you you want to get away. Also, if you're sitting at a table, maybe you're sitting talking to someone, your feet start jiggling and the feet start moving around, yet they were perfectly still before you started talking about the uncomfortable missing money, that's a giveaway too. If they have their legs crossed and all of a sudden their ankle starts jiggling when you start talking about this uncomfortable situation, that's a giveaway also. So remember to watch the feet. So let me tell you a quick story. I used to have this neighbor. And wonderful person, but every time I came out of my house, she would talk to me forever. And I would sit there for a half an hour having a conversation, and I couldn't escape her. So it literally used to be, I'd get ready to walk him out, of, out of my house, I'd see her going to her car, and I'd hop back in, wait for her to get in her car, and then I'd leave. Now, I found myself when I was in conversations with her, like, oh yeah, that's wonderful, wonderful. My feet are pointing that way. Now, that was more consciously. But I'm sure you've been in a dinner party trying to get away from someone. Your head's here, your feet are this way because you're trying to get away from them. So pay attention to the feet jiggling. Also watch where they're pointing. People are say they're cold. My wife always says she's cold. However, if you're sitting there, and let's, let's just use spouses now that I mentioned my wife. So your spouse, let's say you want to know if they're having an affair. They took some money. If you're sitting on a couch and you're like, hey dear, this money went missing, you know, do you know what happened to it? And all of a sudden they say they're cold. A reason for that is when people who are lying feel guilty and they know they're kind of trapped, all the blood rushes to their heart for the fight or flight syndrome. So it's leaving their extremities, which is why they'll often say they're cold when they're lying. A huge one is the freeze. So let's say there was a huge group here, a huge, we were in a huge room. And I was missing my tactical pen. So I came back from a break. I, maybe I put my tactical pen on the table where I got all my gear. And my tactical pen was gone. If I started yelling and screaming at that group, which I wouldn't do, but if I did, and accusing them of stealing my tactical pen, the people who are innocent, the normal reaction would be like, no, we didn't take it. And they'd be animated, no, you know, don't call us that, don't accuse us. Whereas the guilty party would freeze and be the least animated of all of them because they don't want to draw attention to themselves because they know they're guilty. They would kind of want to go on a tortoise shell. And I can give you a perfect example of this, which happened to me on an airplane once. So I'll make this appropriate. I was on an airplane, started to smell a very nasty smell. Somebody had obviously let some gas. Well, it was a horrible smell, and I'm looking up, and I'm looking around like, where in the world did that come from? And I notice everybody else is too looking up like, where in the world is that smell coming from? 
except the guy a row up into my left. He's sitting there freezing while everybody else is looking around, which normal people do, but he's not moving. He's just like this. Dead giveaway, that guy was the culprit of the not very good smell. So pay attention to the freeze. They won't touch you. This is a big one for spouses. You're sitting on the couch again trying to find out if there's missing money or where it went. If your spouse is usually touchy-feely, puts their arm around your arm on the leg, but all of a sudden they've taken off that arm and they're not touchy-feely at all, that's because they feel guilty and they're trying to retract in that shell. So they feel guilty, they don't want to be touching you, pay attention to that. The squinting one, people squinting, that's a hard one to actually pick up on because it's not like their eyes are going to be 90% closed, but the eyes want to shut out the negativity of the interrogation. So if you see all of a sudden the eyes start to squint and get smaller, that's another giveaway, but harder one to see. With the eyes, the misconception is that people always look down, or if they're lying and you ask them a question, they look at the ground. That's not true because we live in a society where we have subordinates. So if your boss came up to you and you're the subordinate and he accused you of you of something, just because he's your boss and you may be intimidated by the CEO or whomever, you may look down. That doesn't mean you're lying, just because that person has more, as a, more of a position of authority. What actually happens with the eyes is people stare too hard. So they try and stare at you and over convince you that no, I'm not lying. It looks weird and that's a way to pick up. Uh, once where I almost accidentally screwed up and did this myself, I was overseas and when you travel overseas, I happened to be working for the agency at the time, I still don't, this was on uh, vacation where I was traveling, personal, you still don't go over there and at customs say, oh yeah, I work for the CIA. So at the time, I was doing some executive protection work and we used to joke that it was like you're a security guard in a three-piece suit. So I got over there, and when they asked me, you know, why are you here, what do you do for a living, which I did ask, I said, oh, I'm a security guard. And they said, well, who do you work for? And I said, Wacken Hut. Wacken Hut is just a big security guard air, uh, company in the D.C. area. They may be outside of the D.C. area, I don't know. Um, so I said, I work for Wacken Hut. And they said, what do you do? And I said, oh, I stand in front of, like, museums, and I stand in front of, like, buildings just to make sure people have their IDs and stuff. Now, when I'm saying this, I feel myself staring too hard to convince the woman and I force myself to break eye contact to act as a normal person. So just be cognizant if you're asking somebody if they stole the money and they're over staring at you, which is not natural, they may be trying too hard to convince you that they're not lying. I already talked about here, do not accuse the person because you need to know their baseline. A few other things liars do is they put objects between themselves. They want to build a barrier because, again, they feel guilty because they are guilty. So if you're sitting with your spouse and you're on the couch and you're talking about the affair or the money or whatever, and all of a sudden they grab a pillow and they're holding the pillow, or maybe they get, grab some kids' toys and start putting it there, and before you know it, you've got pillows and toys and blankets and the Great Wall of China is before you, that's a giveaway that something is going on. Why are they putting all these barriers between you? Also, the head shake. This one is actually tough to fake, but if words come first before the shake. So if you ask somebody a question, their head naturally shakes before the words come out if they're telling the truth. So, you know, hey, are you going to the pool later? Are you going to the gym later? Oh, yeah, yeah. Head comes first because they don't have to think about it. They're telling the truth. If, for some reason, the words come first, then the shake, they're lying. So, you know, hey, are you going to the party? Yes. And then you can see it's awkward to fake. Uh, going the other way, if uh, you know, the head nod saying no is, hey, did you steal the money? No. And then the head shake comes. Well, they actually had to think about it. Because if they didn't steal the money and you said no, you know, you, hard, to, hard to fake as you can see. But if they didn't steal the money, the head nod would come first because they're telling the truth. They wouldn't even have to think about it. Then the words would follow. So pay attention to the head nod. Last few things about detecting a liar. They answer all your questions and ask none of their own. So if you're interrogating someone or you're trying to find out, you know, did, okay, maybe you stole the money and you're to that point where not, do you know if Jeff stole the money, but hey, we think you stole the money. If you're interrogating an innocent person, they're gonna ask questions back. So they're gonna not sit there and take everything where a liar may not ask any questions because they know they're guilty. They don't have the normal human being reaction of an innocent person. Liars hate silence. 
they keep silent. Same thing, a normal reaction is that when you're interrogating someone, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna say, you know, what's going on, they're gonna come back. Where liars, si silence kills them. So if you sit there after you ask them, don't say anything, they may all of a sudden have diarrhea of the mouth and give them away. Um, one other thing before I get to extreme overreaction is liars, and this is a very obvious one, won't answer your question directly. So I can give you a funny example of this that just happened to me, and I did this on purpose because my wife knew I was joking. But my daughter got one of those Cabbage Patch dolls for Christmas. So Cabbage Patch dolls have been around forever as we know, and she loves this thing, carries it around, and she wanted to sleep with it. Well, my wife said, no, don't let her take it to sleep because it'll distract her, it will keep her up, and she won't go right to sleep. So I'm putting my daughter to bed that night, and I'm trying to take this doll away, and I'm extremely tired, and she starts screaming as soon as I take the doll away. So of course, I hand it back to her, I put her in her crib with her doll, she's as happy as a clam. I get back to, I go to bed, and my wife's getting ready to get in bed, and she says, says to me, she's talking to herself, did you give her that doll? I said, what? Now, again, I'm gonna go back, she said, my, you know, your do uh, she said, she's talking to herself, did you give her the doll? And I said, what? That, you know, she knew I was joking, but I didn't say no, because I was guilty. I had given my daughter the doll. Now, of course, my wife knew I was joking, but liars, when they're really trying to lie, they're not going to say no. They're going to say, you know, what or, you know, what do you mean? They're going to ask a question, which is a giveaway, because an innocent person, had I not given my daughter that Cabbage Patch doll, when my wife asked me, did you give her the doll, I would have just said no. Lastly, and this is a big one, extreme overreaction. So people who are guilty have react extremely to you accusing them. So let's say where my tactical pen is, back in my pocket. If this were missing, and I was accusing people here, and just, you know, hey, Jim, did you take my tactical pen? Oh, no, no, no. Now, if I accuse somebody else and say, hey, did you take my tactical pen? And they fly off the handle and start cussing and screaming. It's like, whoa, why do they do that? Because they are so guilty, they want to, they think if they overreact that you might not ask them again. So let me tell you a story of a real life example of this. Is I have a friend. One day she was out and she was in her husband's car for some reason. She found a cell phone. And she called the cell phone. There was only one number in there. A woman picked up and immediately hung up. Now I don't have to tell you all the red flags going off. So she called me and she was like, oh my gosh, I found the cell phone. Told me that there was only one number, called this woman, the woman hang up. And I said, listen, this you know, looks like your husband's having an affair. I'm so sorry. That's, and this is a close friend of mine. And like many people would react, she said, oh no, he never had an affair. We've been married 20 years. And I said, okay, your husband, as you say, is not having an affair. Here's what I want you to do. Tell him exactly what you told me and then call and tell me what his reaction was. So she went to him and said, you know, I was in your car. I found the cell phone. I called. A woman hang up, what's up? That's what I told her to tell him what she did. So she calls me back later and she says, oh, Jason, uh, you know, good news, he's not having an affair because you wouldn't believe. When I found the cell phone and told him what I thought, I've never seen him so mad in his life. He went berserk on me, started yelling and screaming, I couldn't believe it. There you go, extreme overreaction. Most mad she's ever seen him in life, screaming, yelling. So after she tells me how he flipped out and she never seen him so mad, I said, listen, I'm sorry to tell you, he's having an affair. She would not believe me. She was in complete denial. Now, horribly, I think this was about two months later, she gets a knock on her door from the police. Her husband had died while having sex with his mistress in his mistress's bed. Horrible, horrible story, which obviously I hope never happens to you or anyone. But still to this day, when she talks about it, she tells me, like, Jason, I can't believe you knew who was ha he was having an affair. You're the only one who believed it. I can't believe it. Well, it doesn't take a genius, as you know, after everything I just taught you, that all the signs were there, this guy was having an affair. So hopefully, again, you're not ever in a position like that. But go back over this. Go through these things. Remember, they're not going to check off every single one. But if a lot of these pop up, then it's a good sign that the person you are interrogating or trying to find out if they're guilty, that they are indeed guilty and they are lying to you.